Good evening and thanks for joining us on your Friday. I'm Sophie Erber. A severe thunderstorm watch has been issued now for parts of Siouxland this evening. And Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson joins us live now from Storm Lake where the Wood Wine and Blues Festival actually was canceled. Mostly their events there due to the weather and that is why he is joining us safely from indoors with everything you need to know in our top story at 5. That's right, Sophia. I'm live in downtown Storm Lake right now at the Sugar Bowl gift shop. We had planned to be down at Sunset Park, but the threat of severe weather did cancel much of the festival for this evening. Everything is getting shifted to tomorrow and Sunday. We'll get a look at that severe thunderstorm watch now. You can see it painted inside of the pink area on your screen. That's going to be lasting until at least 10 o'clock tonight. The threat of seeing large hail and damaging winds with multiple lines of thunderstorms as they pass through from west to east. We'll get a look at the looping radar now. You can see that we did have um, a line of showers and storms pass along Highway 71. Still seeing a bit of that activity at this moment near Storm Lake. We'll zoom in closer toward that activity now. And you can see uh, again near the Storm Lake area, we do have some thunderstorms that are happening with heavy rain and lots of lightning. We'll zoom in closer towards Sioux City where we also have some threatening skies at the moment with some thunderstorms knocking on the door just west of town. We'll have more details on the timing of these storms, what you can expect as they roll through, and a much cooler weekend coming our way in just a few minutes. I'll send things back to you, Sophie. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. In other news tonight, investigators say an Ames woman's death appears to be a homicide. A suspect was arrested last night in Sac County. 26-year-old Oscar Chavez is charged with first-degree murder. He was pulled over in Auburn, Iowa, just before midnight for a stop sign violation. The deputy says he was acting evasive and didn't have identification. Chavez then told the deputy that he had shot and killed his girlfriend in Ames. Ames police do confirm a woman's body was discovered inside an apartment earlier that evening and that Chavez was the suspect. He is now being held in the Story County Jail. The victim's name has not yet been released as authorities do work to notify family members. The Sioux City Police Department is seeking a man they say was involved in an armed assault from Thursday night. That suspect is 21-year-old Alexio Cariaga. Police say he's 6 feet tall and weighs about 220 pounds. Police do warn he should be considered armed and dangerous. It happened on the 1600 block of 27th Street. Two adult victims reported minor injuries. An officer later spotted that suspect driving on Jackson Street, but the suspect then fled on foot after striking a pole at 29th and Jackson. A handgun was recovered from his car. Today, President Joe Biden outlined a plan to increase evacuations of Americans and people who worked with the United States government over the last 20 years in Afghanistan. And our Washington correspondent, Rashad Hudson, brings us the late details. Good afternoon. Standing alongside his national security team, President Biden said the U.S. is doing everything it can to get as many Americans and allies out of Afghanistan as possible. The United States stands by its commitment that we've made to these people and includes other vulnerable Afghans, such as women leaders and journalists. President Biden said the military has increased its footprint and evacuated 5,700 people in the most recent 24-hour period. This is one of the largest, most difficult airlifts in history. The scene in Afghanistan remains chaotic, but President Biden warned the Taliban not to stand in the way of the evacuation. We'll be met with swift and forceful response. Some lawmakers, like Alabama Congressman Jerry Carl, say the Biden administration is leaving Congress in the dark. We can't just keep being treated like a bunch of children and, and not, you know, given information on an as need no basis. Carl is also worried about what will happen to the weapons and equipment the U.S. gave the Afghan military. They may not be capable or have the knowledge to operate it, but it will be for sale and it'll be sold on a black market somewhere. During those remarks this afternoon, the president said they are working to determine how many Americans are still left in Afghanistan. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson, back to you. A new U.S. Census numbers continue to show a large migration away from city life and into surrounding communities around the Sioux City metro. Sergeant Bluff saw some of the largest growth among cities across Siouxland, adding nearly 800 people and a population increase of 19 percent. The official population now sits at 5,015, making it the largest in city history. 
Siouxlanders will be celebrating one of the city's historic moments this weekend along the Missouri River. The Sioux City Public Museum announced this morning a memorial encampment at the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. That is to close out Sergeant Floyd Week officially. The event will also include a reenactment of Sergeant Floyd's burial. Between the ceremony up at 6 o'clock up on top of the monument, um, it's very moving because you have the whole panorama of the, the river. We can look down the river where Sergeant Floyd probably passed away, and we can look up the river where the expedition is going to be heading for the next two years. The memorial encampment lasts throughout the weekend and includes fun activities as well for kids. The water boil advisory has been lifted tonight in Quimby, Iowa. The advisory was in place since this Monday after repairs were being made to a water line. Well, families of all ages can head down to the Abu Bakr Shrine Temple this weekend for Sioux City's GamesCon. The volunteer-run convention features games of all genres, including role-playing games, board games, video games, and much more. The event will feature several events throughout the weekend. That includes a live-action foam sword fight and other tournaments. Passes can be purchased for the weekend or just for the day. Admission for children under the age of 18 is free but children 14 and under must be accompanied by a paid adult. Some of our big events is our video game room. We're gonna have Smash Brothers, Mario Kart tournament, uh, Rock Band. We're also having two huge feature tournaments, Bold Action World War II Miniatures and Warmer 40,000, which is a very extensive game with a deep and rich universe. You can learn more about what GameCon has to offer up this weekend on this story online right now at SiouxlandProud.com or the KCAU 9 mobile news app. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission refreshed its antitrust case against Facebook Thursday of this week, accusing the social media company of crushing or buying its rivals. At 80 pages, this new complaint is significantly longer than its original 53-page complaint and now includes data and evidence intended to support the FTC's contention that Facebook is a monopolist. An expanded portion of that complaint argues that Facebook dominates the U.S. personal social networking market. The agency also repeated its request that the court order Facebook to sell Instagram, which it bought back in 2012 for $1 billion, along with WhatsApp, which it bought in 2014 for $19 billion. Facebook says that it would continue to fight this lawsuit. The global semiconductor shortage has finally caught up to automaker Toyota. Japan's largest car maker will cut production there by 40% next month. Ford and General Motors also say they are scheduling more downtime at several North American factories of theirs, partly because of coronavirus-related restrictions overseas, further adding to constraints in chip supply. But there's a silver lining for these car companies. The lack of vehicles on dealer lots has been pushing up their prices. A third of all neighborhoods in America's largest U.S. cities might lack access to a nearby pharmacy. But which ones are the hardest hit? With more, here's ABC News' Alex Perche. Researchers from the University of Southern California found that almost 15 million people living in urban areas were affected by pharmacy deserts in 2015. Pharmacy deserts are defined as neighborhoods over one mile away from a pharmacy. And that distance has decreased to over half a mile for low-income areas. These pharmacy deserts were more likely to be located in black or Hispanic city neighborhoods. Researchers say the inability to easily access pharmacies may help explain why black and Hispanic populations are more disproportionately affected by health disparities. But researchers also say there may be ways to change this. Policies that improve access by providing incentives for chains to open up in these pharmacy deserts could be a start. With this Medical Minute, I'm Alex Perche, ABC News. While well, large companies across the United States have announced that COVID-19 vaccines will be required for their employees to return to work, at least in person, there is one state where such requirements are actually banned. The Republican-controlled Montana legislature passed a new law earlier this year that says requiring vaccines as a condition for employment is deemed, quote, discrimination and a violation of the state's human rights laws. The law has raised some concern among employers across the state as Montana now struggles with a rise in COVID-19 case numbers. This week, physicians called on the legislature there to reverse that law. International travel regulations are still fluctuating due to virus concerns. The United States government is extending a ban now on non-essential travel along the borders with Canada and Mexico. That is, of course, to slow the spread of COVID-19. 
This comes despite increasing pressure to lift the restriction. In addition, Canada recently began letting fully vaccinated U.S. citizens to enter their country. College students and takeout are usually the perfect combo, and technology making it easier to get cravings delivered. We'll explain how coming up in about 10 minutes. But first, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson will have the 9 on 9 forecast plus chances of storms this evening. That's all coming up next, so do stay with us. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Thanks for staying with us. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson is once again out in Storm Lake and he joins us live again with the latest on how those storms are shaping up tonight, Scott. Thank you very much, Sophie. I'm live in downtown Storm Lake. The plan was to be down at Sunset Park for the Woodwine and Blues Festival, but unfortunately most of those events, at least for this evening, have been canceled. But I am happy to say that most of the weekend appears to be in good shape, so it's likely that things will be fine for Saturday and Sunday. We'll get a look at those thunderstorms now on the looping radar. You can see that we did have some thunderstorms happen earlier this morning in northeast Nebraska, dropping some meaningful amounts of rain toward Norfolk. We've had some of those lines of thunderstorms reassemble. Overall, it looks like next week is going to be fairly comfortable with highs in the low to mid 80s. We'll have more from Storm Lake coming up later in the newscast. For now, I'll send things back to the studio. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, KCAU 9 News. Sophie. All right, thanks so much, Scott. And a sure way to make sure you won't lose your vaccination card is by having it on hand digitally at all times, at least if you carry a digital device with you. We'll show you just how easy it is to connect your records to your phone coming up in about nine minutes. But first, there's now a quicker, smarter, more convenient way of getting your food. It doesn't involve any humans either. We'll explain the delivery process coming up next. If you missed KCAU 9 News at 10 this week, you missed why Hosper's Furniture is closing after 100 years in business and why an expecting Sulan mother chose to vaccinate against COVID. KCAU 9 News at 10, the day's top stories in your full forecast, all before the first commercial break. If you're hungry, they say the food is on its way to you. On the Ohio State campus, at least, Brad Johnson explains how a fleet of rovers is rolling out. I want food. All right, so I'm going to go through the Grubhub app. Good idea. Maybe just a cup of coffee. I'm going to choose my sugars. Ooh, that's a lot of sugar. Yeah, it's telling me now that there's no rover delivery, so I'm trying to fix that. <laughs> Consider it fixed. These autonomous vehicles, these robots, will deliver food to students on campus. Yandex and Grubhub have teamed up and picked Ohio State for its first campus experiment because... We were the highest volume mobile ordering campus in the country. What? Last year, 98% of our food orders came from mobile devices. That is super cool. Students love it. Uh, it is really super fun and cool. Uh, the robots. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but they look pretty cool. 50 rovers to start with, soon expanding to 100 going to two coffee shops and a couple of restaurants. I can click multiple different entrances and choose which one I want to order to. And then all I hit was just place my delivery order. It's, su it's super fun. Super fun and super intelligent. These things use four different technologies, radar, LIDAR, and a couple of others, to sense what their surroundings are. And so you'll see if they come up on someone or they're near someone, they'll stop. I mean, what would you call a thing like that? The mobile, like, food, like, robot or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Not real catchy, but we can work on it. They're super fun, and you can talk to them. But will they talk back? Uh, not right now, but there are plans for the rovers to talk back eventually, yes. Well, News Nation Prime is the country's only live national newscast, of course, in prime time. And it comes your way every night now at 7 on News Nation. At 6 Central is the Donlin Report. Here's a preview of what's coming up there tonight. Tonight on the Donlin Report, a messy withdrawal continues in Afghanistan. Today, President Biden plays defense, his new plan to slow the Taliban and bring everyone home safely. Now, here's Leland Vitter with a preview of On Balance. Thanks, Joe. Tonight, we're going to check in with a journalist currently in Afghanistan, how she's covering events as they unfold. Plus, what it's like for American citizens during this crisis. That's coming up on Balance tonight, followed by News Nation Prime. Again, News Nation Prime comes your way every night at 7 on News Nation. You can see some of the channels listed there on your screen or just check your own local guide. 
If you don't want to lose your vaccination card, we have a solution for you digitally. Putting it on your phone. We're learning several ways to keep a digital record next. There are many convenient ways now to capture and keep a digital copy of your COVID-19 vaccination card right on your phone. Rich DeMiro shows us the ropes in today's TechSmart. Right now, there's not one official way of keeping a copy of your vaccination card on your phone, but there are several methods where you can keep an easily accessible digital copy on your phone. Here's a look. Snapping a photo of your vaccination card is a quick way to store it on your phone, but here are some other ways to keep it easily accessible. For starters, you can scan a copy of your card using the iPhone Notes app. Open a new note, hit the camera icon, and choose Scan Documents. On Android, long press the drive icon, then hit Scan. Once you save your note, go into Options and tap Make Available Offline, then Add to Home Screen. This will give you a shortcut for fast access. The California Department of Health lets you request a digital copy of your vaccine record. There's a website called VaxYes. It will give you a free digital vaccine passport for your phone. Just submit a snapshot of your vaccination card, and the site uses artificial intelligence and state records to validate your information. The Clear app has a feature that allows you to create a digital vaccine card complete with your photo. No subscription necessary. And if you don't feel comfortable uploading your card, check with the health provider that gave you your shot. Carbon Health, CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart all participate in the Smart Health Card standard. An app called Common Pass can then import the QR code they provide. It's free, and Common Pass promises not to track you. Well, Toys R Us is getting another lease on life tonight, teaming up with Macy's to open toy shops in more than 400 department stores. That's all starting next year. Already, customers can shop for the toys at Toys R Us products at Macy's.com. The Toys R Us brand has been around for more than 70 years. Even Joffrey the Giraffe will be on hand to welcome back shoppers come 2022. We take a live look outside right now from downtown Sioux City with an ominous scene there. Scott returns from Storm Lake with one more check on your forecast. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm in downtown Storm Lake, the site of the Woodwine and Blues Festival this weekend. Unfortunately, most of this evening's events at least have been canceled, but as we go through the weekend, we should have things get better. This evening, though, be on the lookout for some severe thunderstorms to happen. We do have a severe thunderstorm watch that will last until at least 10 o'clock tonight. For Southern Points in Siouxland, that goes till 11. As we look at the 9 on 9 forecast, you can expect to see a high temperature of about 80 for tomorrow afternoon. Some nice relief from the heat. Drier air also working in. Some additional small storm chances as we go through next week. But again, a lot of fun to be had out here in Storm Lake. There's going to be some live music, uh, triathlon occurring tomorrow. So make sure to make a point of heading down to Buena Vista County. Sophie, I'll send things back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Scott. We hope you'll join us here again at 6. Until then, have a great night, everyone.